first speaker's speech, all our other uh, panelists. Uh, I think the best thing is to go with uh, Mariana de la Roche. Mariana is senior regulatory expert of Internet of Things Association and board member of INATPA under the European Commission for Economy and, uh, Pol uh, and Society. Uh, if you uh, don't mind, I would like to ask uh, three short questions so you will get all together and summarize. Uh, the first question is, how can we bridge the gap between technological advan advancements in AI and public understanding or trust, ensuring widespread adoption in finance? Second question is, how do you see the convergence of blockchain and AI shaping the future of finance? And the last one, the least one, are you working on any report or paper on AI or blockchain? Uh, the floor is yours. No. <laughs> I'm always working on reports and I'm trying to create like more micro. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I forgot to say that. Um, i actually going to address those questions and address some of the things that I heard today because I think that it's important to build upon what we are hearing, right? Um, I think that like, the first thing that I would like to say is that like, I would like to rename the, na the, the panel uh, title because we are talking about like revolution, but like if we have seen something in like history is that revolution that always end well for the civil society. And I think that this is really important to address when we are talking about new technologies. Um, and your first question is actually really interesting because I actually think that like now we have like the data economy and this is like one of like the core things that we are discussing, but we keep talking about technology in isolation and this is not going to work as nothing in society works on silos. So we have like different set of technologies that are being developed right now we have AI, we have blockchain, we have uh, virtual reality, we have like thousands of different things that are popping up like every day and we are lacking the understanding that all of these technologies built upon each other, right? Uh, for me, blockchain is the trust, le like the trust layer for building all of these different technologies and actually I when talking about like the financial system and the economy, I can just like stay here and just like actually tell you how AI is going to make us uh, make decisions like faster and efficient, how we can actually use uh, or train algorithms to just like identify patterns uh, with like liquidity pools and actually understand what I need to buy, what I need to sell, and I can generate more profits, right? But we are in the UN <laughs> and we are hosted by the Alliance of Civilizations. So I would like to actually talk about the financial and the economy from a different kind of point of view uh, from the profit re 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 generation, right? And he's actually considering that we have 1.7 billion people outside of the financial uh, institutions and, and services. And 1.2 out of that 1.7 are people um, are actually like farmers and people working in the agriculture sector. And I'm going to put like a couple of examples because as you mentioned, like how we can actually like extend the, 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 the knowledge that we have about technologies. Well, I think that examples is the best way to actually understand how these technologies can help us uh, in society with real problems uh, that we have not been able to solve. Um, and agriculture is one of like those sectors that I think that we undermine sometimes and we tend to forget like no food, no future. Like it's as simple as this, like, like it's a matter of survival. And we have people that is not able to access financial, uh, the financial uh, services because they are or in isolated areas where they don't have the infrastructure or because they cannot access the services because they don't have a collateral or they access uh, the services but they have like really high level interest because they don't have or cannot provide guarantees. And there are different projects actually working on on this matter, there is one of uh, my favorites, it's called Ethics Hub, uh, which is creating a platform that connects investors with small farmers and is allowing these investors to actually uh, stake uh, in, in crypto assets and provide the, the, the liquidity for these uh, uh, farmers in remote areas to actually be able to develop their land and, be, uh, and generate profits and actually become uh, sustainable economically. And, built on the land, right? And this is like really interesting because they have not been that long in the market and they already are distributed or like got like uh, investment in like over like 4 million euros um, that are like coming directly 
to the people that is needed it, in this case, the, the farmers. And they are already in like six countries working with like, I think it's like 1,200 different farmers uh, at this point. And there are other projects that are also like, because I talk about like efficiency, that are actually using a, like AI, IoT, and, um, and, and, and um, digital twins to uh, support farmers to actually understand the conditions or the environmental conditions to improve the, the, the crops and make the, 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 what they are doing like more efficient. It's a project called Sig, uh, Figma, Signar from the, IOTA, from the IOTA community. And all of, the, all of this to say that like actually when we are talking about like data and everything that was discussed today here, uh, we are talking about like the data economy and data is the cornerstone of absolutely that, 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 that we are building. And I heard a lot today about how this, uh, this new technology comes with challenges, right? Challenges about the, the reliability of the data that we are using, the quality of the data that we are using to train the models, but also the quality of the data that, that, that is coming out of the models and the ownership of the data. And I'm a really practical person, so I heard a lot today about the what we need. So we need transparency, we need ownership of the data, we need decentralization, but I'm sad to say that I didn't really hear the how are we going to address those challenges. And the good thing is that like we actually have tools as well that are helping us to actually address these challenges. And as I see it, it's like blockchain is the perfect match for AI to actually address some of these things, right? Because it has like like enhancing the properties and the characteristics of blockchain, we have the decentralization architecture that can allow us to eliminate biases by accessing different data sets and coming from a diverse, like, 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 uh, diverse, like the diversity of data sets is what is going to prevent that we have like uh, polarization and, 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 and one point of view that is creating the data, uh, the, the, the biases on, on the data sets. But we also can generate um, incentive schemes and this is one of the most important parts as I see it, and I, I will end with this, and is that blockchain actually allow us to recover the property of the data. Like me as a user that I generate in the data, I own this data, why is big corporations profiting for the data that I'm producing if it's mine? It should be me the one that is profiting for this data. It should be me the one that decides what I'm going to do with this data. It should be me the one that decides to whom I'm gonna give this data. And this is what like blockchain brings back it brings back the power to the individual. And it's up to me if I decide to share my data and profit from my data or not. And I think that this also brings transparency because I will know where is the data set coming from and who is using it and how. And with that I will finish because I think that that's my, my call to action here today and is that like we need to stop considering technology in isolation. All of these technologies being upon each other, they actually are help, like they help each other to solve and mitigate some of the risks that they they, they produce by working alone. And at the end, what we wanted to do and is reshape the way that we understand economy and bring back the economy and center it into the user. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move to Boris Petrovich.